Good morning, it's Matt. I'm sat here with a cup of coffee and which looks far too hot to drink and a packet of, yeah, you guessed it, Jaffa cakes. Happy days. So up in front of us, we've got the latest Hobby Bulls order. Uh, I'm just going to quickly run for it just to see if my logic of buying decisions helps you uh, with your buying decisions, if that makes sense. Uh, now, I have had to falsify some of the details on here because obviously it had my phone number and address and true order number. So, yeah, there's details. <laughs> Wing Nut House, Ragged Road. <laughs> Wing City's probably about right. Uh, so some of the details are slightly incorrect for obvious reasons. So let's start with the first one. Oh, I saw Ben use the knees up at the flight line the other day. They are some servo extension lead keepers. They're little just clip on ones, which I, I was thinking some of my models, I do have extensions in them and what effect would happen uh, if one of the extension, uh, one of the uh, leads did come undone. Yeah, I think that was kind of a good idea. I know on some of them I've glued them and on others I've put tape around them and that seems to work really well. But for the sake of 98 pence, then happy days. So I've gone for some of those. What else have we gone? Oh, they came back in stock. No, where is it? It's down here at the bottom. The NTM prop drive came back in stock, but this is the 3000 KV one. Uh, absolutely mental motor. I mean, like, just in truly insane, but it's been out of stock for absolutely ages, and the email came in this morning, so uh, that's what half prompted uh, this little buying vendor. So, yeah, those are absolutely bonkers. I've flown them on planes before, uh, and they just rip the sky, a new one. So, Jaffa Coke in the pie hole. Uh, now, you will need uh, an accessory kit for those as well, so... Don't just buy the motor, make sure you get the accessory kit, which comes with a little mountain plate on the back. But the bit which you're really interested in, and I'm going to have to have a slurp of coffee. Mm. That's better. Is that it comes with the prop adapter as well. And a massive tip for these prop adapters, don't over torque them, because they're only made out of aluminium, and they will snap, as I found out a couple of weeks back. Yeah, not fun. Moving down, oh, I bought one of these receiver packs. Uh, let me wait for this to load up. I've got one of these in my um, Zach Speed. Really, really good packs. Now, I did buy some smaller packs from Bangles, and uh, they were only four cell, but only rated to 700 milliamp hours. And the more I thought about it, I think it was probably better that I've got to add a load of nose weight to the uh, Zach Combat Wing, so going for a better pack, which is rated for 2,300, is happy days. And also it's a six volt pack. So that will work fine uh, with not only the receiver, but also the servos as well. So it's on its upper limits, but it will work. And I've used it in the Zach Speed. So yeah, yeah. And again, you can feel the weight in that battery pack compared to the little 700 milliamp hour ones I got from uh, Banggood. Uh, yeah, this is a much better quality pack. Uh, I know about three times as expensive, but hey ho. What else did we get? Oh, I also got this smaller flight pack as well. Now, the reason why I chose this flight pack uh, is to go in the Weasel XP, which is sat right next to me. So I needed something small uh, to go in there. It is a lifey, okay? But remember, with the Weasel XP, it is a slope sawer. And 6.6 uh, .6 volts, again, we're kind of at the upper limit of what we can do with the servos and the receiver. Um, I may just put a back in there just for safety. Um, and yeah, happy days. Now you may be wondering, Matt, why didn't you get like a 4AA pack, for example, which has been like pre-soldered up? Uh, in short, I did consider that, but it's going to be such a squeeze in that nose. Uh, and then just checking out the measurements down here is that it was uh, five centimeters long by height, which they've got C, which is, uh, sorry, B, which is that there, it's three centimeters uh, and then 15. So that will fit in really nicely into the fuselage area. So yeah, happy days on that one. What else have we got in here? Oh, I went for another 30 amp ESC. Now the reason why I've gone for this one is because I've used them before and they're really pretty good, to be fair, they're fine. 
and uh, you can also set the breakup on them as well uh, which is not enabled by default I really need to get a quick video out to show you how to set the breakup on these uh, it's super super simple now that uh, ESC is actually for the uh, Hornet flying wing which I've got sat right next to me uh, and the reason why I've gone for 30 amp is because there's a very very high chance that I'm likely to put a, what is it it's a DYS SB2205 2300 kV motor in it uh, which is actually meant for a quadcopter but it does rip the sky a new one if you put it on the plane uh, but the current gets withdrawal gets really really high so I was thinking in the beginning, I've got a little 20 amper here, uh, which will be fine with the, oh, it is such a deadly motor. I've got an Emax MT1806 2280 kV motor right in front of me. I will start with a small setup first, and of course we can go bonkers afterwards. And then, what else have we got on here? Oh yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, these motors, the D2826-6, that's the 2200 kV version. Now, the reason why I like these motors, number one, they do come with the pre-soldered 3.5 millimeter bullets, and they do come with the accessory pack as well. But what they don't say on here is actually very curious because if you run this, say, on a six before, and actually look, they're suggesting a five by five, and I've never run one of these on a five by five, I've always run them on six by fours, is that you can run this motor uh, on 4S, okay, and it absolutely screams, and I mean absolutely screams the sky down, uh, and the model just goes absolutely bonkers. Um, so, yeah, perfectly acceptable on 3S, uh, bonkers beyond belief uh, on 4S. So that motor is designated for the Raven flying wing. Uh, so, yeah, happy days, that one's going to be fun. And let's scroll down. Oh, by the way, you probably shouldn't run yours on 4S because I'm fully prepared for the motor to burn out. Uh, you may not be prepared for that. Now, the last two are batteries, and I'm going to open both of these up. So let's start with the first one. So I was trying to find a smaller size battery uh, which would fit in the... Uh, oh, that's the 4S version. Let me get the right one. So there's the smaller size battery. So that's a 3S, and it's only it's like the, one of the smallest batteries which I've got for a plane. Uh, it's 850 milliamps, but it's 3S. Now, it's the higher rated 45C one. Uh, they're not cheap at £7.80. I did find some much cheaper ones, but they had like half the C rating. Uh, and the, these batteries, I've bought three of them because they're designated for the little Hornet flying wing. So... I really, really would like just to get a good couple of flights out of her, and I think sticking a 1.3 battery in it would probably be a bit make it way too nose heavy. And just like the bonsai, the mental bonsai, I've only got 1.3 3S batteries, is like the smallest ones I've got, and it really does make it nose heavy, and it really does sag its ass in the bends. So like lit, I've been caught out so many times by banking round too low to the ground and it drops about two meters uh, of height and it will scuff the ground and yeah in fact the last time I took it out I did exactly that so yeah I'll get some dual purpose out of these batteries I'll not only use it now in this little hornet uh, micro flying wing thing uh, I'll also probably end up using it in the mental bonsai and maybe it'll make the mental bonsai a little bit more flyable because like I said it really is a saggy one now I also bought this one, which I was uh, I was in, up in the uh, up in the air between this one and an 854s, which had a higher C rating. Now I went for this one because it had it was rated to a thousand milliamp per hours, and I thought that was a really really good idea to have the extra 150 milliamp per hours in it because uh, of the FPV gear which I'm going to be running in there. So I still want to be able to see where I'm going for longer. Uh, so yeah, lower C rating. I think it was one of those blue bolt ones, uh, which had a, like a 65 C rating. And, and to be honest, there was only like 60 pence difference between this one and the other one. But so it really wasn't down to price. It was really down to the, the rating uh, for the life of the battery. So I thought it was more sensible to go for this one 
uh, and then means I can fly for just a little bit longer. And remember, we do have FPV equipment uh, to power at the same time. Now, actually, talking about it, let me go and get this up on another tab for you. Uh, what was it? Hornet, wasn't it? Hornet. There we go. Let me go and grab this and put this on the screen. There we go. So, talking about the Hornet Racing Wing is that I've bought the, what was it, the MT, the Emax MT1806 motor, which will probably be perfectly with some fats. The motor is so small, it's kind of embarrassing to have that on a plane. Um, not that I have issues with size, I hasten to add, but it is a bit of a diddy motor. It's not very big. If you've ever seen one of these 1806 motors, they are very, very diddy. So, and compared to the model, it probably is in proportion to the model, but... I really do think a 2205 uh, would be far more suitable for it. But my point being is that on this model, can you see where they've got the FPV geared? So they're using uh, a decent quality, by the, by the looks of it, a decent camera uh, or a separate camera and a separate video transmitter. Now, right now, I'm, I'm, I'm up at now. And again, open question for you. Do I go for a separate video transmitter and separate camera or do I go for one of the all-in-one units? So something like the MC01, which works exceptionally well. Uh, saying that, I do have another one, a TX02 uh, on the way to me as well. So do I go for a separate video transmitter uh, and camera, or do I go for one of the all-in-one units? So I'll tell you what, let's just sit back and think about that for a few seconds. Is, and again, I, I'd really value your input. This is, and this is one of the reasons why I'm making this episode is to, to get your feedback. What would you do in my situation? So let's weigh up the two different sides of this to go for an all-in-one unit or uh, to go for separate components. So if we look at the all-in-one unit, on its positive side, we have weight. Uh, it's gonna be a much lighter module because the, the compared to a separate components that for the weight of the camera, you get the video transmitter included as well. Uh, also on the all-in-one side, wiring is a lot, lot saner, is that you don't have to put like a special back in there or anything like that. Um, it's just really straightforward. And also for fitment as well, you've only really got one cut to, to actually fit it in the model. Now let's think about the downsides to the all-in-one module is the video quality is a big factor. Let's face it, on these all-in-one little, all-in-one units, they all run, well, I haven't seen one yet, uh, which doesn't have a CCD camera in it. They're typically always CMOS. So I'm thinking with winter coming here in the United Kingdom, the leaves are just starting to drop here. So autumn's definitely on its way. Uh, is it not, is it false economy? Not, not price-wise, but um, weight-wise and time-wise to go for one of the all-in-one units considering that I'm more likely now to be flying it in less than ideal lighting conditions. So is that a major concern which I need to think about? So let's move to the other side of the table and go for a separate components. Now on the obvious side is that you can go for, well I can go for, a CCD camera. So whether that's a board camera like they've got mounted on the front uh, or maybe something like a Runcam Swift, which by the way is absolutely an absolutely amazeable camera. It's definitely my favorite. Um, so I do have a little bit more choice when it comes to the actual camera itself and I would obviously get a better quality. Now again, that is a consideration is that if my personal goal is to cane this through a load of air gates, uh, which aren't really more than say a meter or three foot tall, uh, the a better quality image would probably definitely help. Uh, that That's for sure. Anything which can give me uh, some added advantage on the flight line would definitely help. And for the separate video transmitter, it gives me more choice uh, on the different power ratings which I could use. Also, it's position on the Model 2. And well, when, they, again, then just thinking about the when it comes to the power rating of the actual video transmitter, whether it's the all-in-one unit, say at 25 milliwatts, or a larger unit uh, on the side, if it was a separate uh, video transmitter, is the, I, I know, where is it? It's here on my desk somewhere, the Bosch Cam, whatever it was, the diversity receiver. And however annoying it was for it to not turn up and work, uh, there seems to be, I, I reckon it's the, uh, 
uh, IF filter in the middle, it's not picking up the right channel and then getting distorted, but uh, hey ho. Um, but if I'm running a diversity receiver, that would definitely help with the reception. So yeah, it's a tough one. I, I don't know which way to go right now. And I've got it sat here on my desk and I know what I need to do to build it. But when it comes to the FPV, I, I'm not too sure. What would you do in my position? Would you go for the all-in-one unit, which would be lighter uh, and just work? If you know, it just kind of works. But on the downside, we do lose a bit in, uh, what's it, the dynamic range uh, for its ability to cope with the different lighting levels. Uh, that would be the negative for it. Or do I go for the separate unit? So go for a better CCD camera uh, and then have a separate video transmitter, which then means I need to cut a separate hole in the uh, side for it. So as you can see on the screen is that we need to get that mounted uh, on just off to the side. So that doesn't require extra work to build it. So yeah, it's, it's a curious one right now. Oh, and as for servos, I'm already sold that I'm gonna put some of the uh, MG, what was it, 90S, whatever it are, the 12 gram metal good servos. Those servers have just been brilliant. Um, and yeah, that's the plan right now. Color scheme, I don't know if I'm honest. It's just a white wing at the moment. They've done theirs red, well, yellow and black. I think that's pretty cool. Um, all I know is that if I'm gonna paint it, then I'll need an acrylic based paint. So that's probably just one of the kids paints which we'll use. Don't know what I'm gonna do for a design on it. I'm not particularly creative, believe it or not. Uh, so yeah, that's a curious one. But anyway, come up to the FPV kit. What would you choose? Do let me know in the comments section underneath this video uh, and my little walkthrough of the Hobby King order as well. Did that some of my logic kind of make sense for that? Again, let me know in the comments section underneath this video. I'd love to hear from you just to see what you think and definitely do let me know what you reckon I should do about the FPV setup as well uh, because that is my kind of stumbling block right now. I think I can get so far in the build but then I'll have to stop until I actually make the decision of what I'm gonna do on the FPV side. So with that said, as always, for myself, Matt, thank you ever so much for taking the time to watch this video. And please do let me know what your thoughts are in the comments section underneath this video. I really would appreciate your feedback and obviously your thoughts as well. So with that said, for myself, Matt, cheerios.